Welcome to this crash course in the Italian wine region of Lombardia. You're going to learn exactly what makes Lombardia a unique wine producing region, what types of wines do they make, and where you should begin your journey in tasting these wines. I'm Tony Margiata. I'm a wine importer and author of Hidden Gems of Italy. My life's mission is to look for and support world-class artisanal wines handcrafted in small batches, many of which have been overlooked. My family's from a small village in the Molise region of Southern Italy, and I've been traveling to Italy over 20 years, immersing myself in Italian food, wine, and culture. So where is Lombardia? Well, it's attached to several regions in the north. Uh, it shares its borders with Piemonte, with Alto Adige, with Veneto, and Emilia Romagna. It's also attached to the north to the country of Switzerland, which makes it interesting. So what makes Lombardia unique? Well, Lombardia is the most populous, the richest, and most productive region in all of Italy. Its landscape is particularly famous for its lakes, like Lago di Como, Lago Maggiore, and Lago di Garda, which the last two are, are shared between some of the regions. Lago Maggiore, which you see in this picture here, is shared with uh, Piemonte and Switzerland, and Lago di Garda to the east is shared with the region of Veneto, which is particularly important for winemaking that area around Lago di Garda. Okay, there's also the city, the great city of Milano, which is the capital of Lombardia, and its metropolitan area is the largest metropolitan area in all of Italy. Lombardia is also the Italian region with the most world heritage sites, uh, not just in Italy, but actually the world. A world heritage site has been designated as a place of great value to humanity and it's protected so future generations can enjoy them. The name Lombardia uh, is named after a Germanic tribe called the Lombards that conquered Northern Italy in the year 568 and ended up uh, conquering most of the Italian peninsula later on. Winemaking in this region dates back to the time of the Greeks from Athens because they settled in this area and traded wine with the Etruscans along the Po River, which you can see in this picture. So how should you think about Lombardia wines? Well, there's the native grape varietals, of course, and then there are the Appalachians. Let's go over some of the grapes from Lombardia. Now, Lombardia has dozens and dozens of grape varietals in the region, but they're not all native. The region is actually full of many French varietals, and in fact, Pinot Noir is one of the most cultivated varietals in the region. Um, you'll also find lots of popular Italian varietals, well-known varietals like Sangiovese and Barbera. You can find those in Lombardia as well. You'll see uh, lesser known varietals like Marzemino and Uvarara, which are shared with some of the other Northern Italian regions, which is in part why I didn't put them on the list. Um, in, in this region, you're going to see a lot of blends. You don't see particularly a lot of mono varietals like you'll find in many of the other regions. Um, so, but that's, that's slowly changing. The two red varietals I want to point out to your attention right off the bat are Gropello and Chievanasca. Now, Gropello is actually a family of grapes. So there's different types of Gropello uh, grapes used for winemaking. Um, so as you, if you were to explore one, one red varietal, that would be the one because there's so many different versions of it. And they will tell you on the bottle where it's from. It's usually like Gropello from this area, Gropello from that area. And the characteristics uh, are slightly different, like different shades of a color. So definitely check out Gropello. Then interestingly enough, um, uh, oh yeah, and by the way, Gropello, you can typically find in a mono varietal version, 100% Gropello. Um, this is probably uh, the most unique red varietal to the region because Gropello, you don't really find in the other regions. So Lombardia really, really specializes in this varietal. So um, that's why I'm sort of emphasizing the importance of that. Um, and then sometimes you'll even find Gropello blended with different types of Gropello uh, varietals. So um, that, that's, that's sort of interesting as well. Um, the next varietal uh, is Chiavanasca, better known as Nebbiolo. 
So for those of you who are familiar with the Nebbiolo grape varietal or you're familiar with Piemonte, which is really the home of the great Nebbiolo based wines like Barolo Barbaresco, um, interestingly enough, there's a very important appellation in the Lombardia region where they cultivate Nebbiolo and make a very interesting wine, but they don't call it Nebbiolo, they call it Chiavanasca. It's a, a local dialect word, but it's the same grape as the one in Piemonte. And then the third grape varietal uh, that you should keep a lookout for is called Croatina. Locally in Piemonte, they call it Bonarda, but it's actually Croatina. You will see on uh, typically the front labels of certain wines from Lombardia, you'll see the word Bonarda, and when you do, most likely it's actually the grape varietal Croatina. So just, it's a little funky, small detail, but important to know. What else should I tell you about this varietal? Um, Croatina is not just found in Lombardia, it's also found in Veneto, and I believe in Piemonte. Um, in Veneto, it is a part of some of the Amarone blends. Uh, not in the Classico area, but in the areas surrounding the Classico area of Amarone, you can find uh, Croatina as a very, very small percentage in the blend. Um, what else can I tell you? It's also um, uh, sort of an up and coming varietal in Lombardia for some reason. Um, you're seeing more and more mono varietals coming out of the region made with Croatina, which is why I, I put it on the list. Um, it might be hard to find, but sooner or later, there will be more and more of them available to the market because they're getting great results with this 100% Croatina wines coming from Lombardia, which is, I'm not seeing that in the other regions. Like I said, in Veneto, it's a blending grape. In Piemonte, it's a, a blending grape. Um, it's really only Lombardia that seems to be exploring the Croatina as a 100% varietal wine in certain parts of the region. And then on the whites, Sorry, we didn't talk about the white wines yet. Uh, the most important varietal is Turbiana uh, by far. Uh, Turbiano is actually called Trebbiano di Lugana. It's a part of the Trebbiano family, but it's really its own grape varietal. So it's not just another Trebbiano uh, wine, it's truly its own. So we call it Turbiana. And I'll, I'll recommend a, an appellation later where you can taste this varietal as a mono varietal 100%. Uh, another varietal that you should keep an eye out for is Verdea, another white grape varietal that um, you're starting to see more and more of 100% varietals coming out of the region. And of course, two other white varietals, which you will find all over Italy is Moscato and Malvasia. Of course, um, uh, you can find these varietals throughout Italy. And if you're a fan of Moscato Mavasia wines, you should definitely check out the ones from Lombardia as a comparison. There are dry versions and then there, there are also sweet versions. So make sure you look out on the labels as to which one is which, because if you like dry, um, look out for the word dolce, which means sweet. Obviously you're going to avoid that if you're looking for the dry version. If you like sweet wines, look out for the word dolce. Um, and then you most certainly will get a sweet wine. And of course, um, I always recommend, you know, when you're going through this list of varietals to taste, before you put a check mark on, say, okay, I know what Gropello tastes like, okay, uh, make sure um, you're, you're tasting artisanal versions of these wines, wines that are produced at 50,000 bottles a year or less. This, uh, these, are the, these are the wines that really express the originality, the originality, the authenticity, and the unique character of those varietals. Okay, the other way you should be uh, thinking about Lombardia wines in your mind is paying attention to the appellations. Uh, obviously, you don't need to learn them all. If you happen to be a really big fan of wines from Lombardia, you might want to explore the appellations a little bit more so you can taste the variations in terroir from one to the other. On the right hand side, you can see there's just a few DOCGs, uh, not too many. And then on the left hand side, there's a, a couple dozen DOCs, and I'm going to recommend a few of those here in the next page. So uh, the first appellation you should check out is really sort of um, uh, an exception to the to the rule, to my rule, which is um, Francia Corta DOCG is not made with native Italian grape varietals. This is probably 
the only wine you'll ever see me recommend to you uh, that is not made with native Italian varietals. And so what is Franciacorta? Well, Franciacorta is a sparkling white wine that has really uh, gained the respect of the wine world through recent years as a very, very fine sparkling wine. So it's deserving for you to check it out. It, it tends to command a higher price tag, but um, it's definitely a high-end uh, special sparkling wine. They're, they're somewhat more affordable in Italy, but by the time you export them to the US, they can be quite pricey. Francia Corta is predominantly made with Chardonnay and or Pinot Noir, along with a smaller percentage of Pinot Bianco. And then recently they started adding, interestingly enough, they started adding a native Italian grape varietal in the blend, but only recently, which is called Erba Mat, but in a very, very small percentage. So it's gonna be interesting to see in the future uh, how Francia Corta wines develop over time. Then the next appellation you absolutely must check out for white wines, and that's Lugana DOC. That's made with 100% Turbiana. That's a must, I love that wine. Uh, then the last three, we're gonna cover reds. The Vatalina Superiore DOCG, that's made with the, the Nebbiolo grape. And this is the appellation that you should definitely check out. The Vatalina appellation is super important from Nebbiolo in Lombardia and is distinctly different from the Nebbiolo wines from Piemonte because the terroir is completely different, but uh, it, like fantastic results are coming from that region. And you might even be able to find uh, a cheaper, if you're a Nebbiolo fan, uh, you can probably find a really good deal on these wines because they're just, they're just less known. And uh, you, know, you, you could probably sc uh, scoop up a nice deal. The next wine, obviously, is Gropello Garda, DOC. This Garda appellation uh, rests around the Lake of Garda, which is shared between Veneto and uh, Lombardia. Uh, definitely check out that appellation. And finally, the Bonarda del Otrepo Pavese, DOC. That is the uh, Croatina-based wine that you should check out. And if you can get it, try to get something that's 95 to 100% uh, Croatina. That would be a fantastic uh, wine to explore. So what's the first sparkling white wine you should try? You know that in most regions, I don't recommend sparkling wines other than Emilia Romagna, but uh, from Lombardia, you absolutely must try one of these Francia Corta DOCGs, arguably one of the finest uh, sparkling wines in the world today sort of in the neighborhood of Champagne, if you will. First white wine you should try, definitely get a Lugana DOC. Uh, you will not be sorry. Medium bodied, fresh citrus and floral notes and very sophisticated textures. And then the first red wine you should try is the Gropello Garda Classico DOC, uh, also around the Lake Garda um, appellation. Uh, which will be a very interesting wine as well. So that's it for Lombardia. Make sure you subscribe to Gladiator Wine TV so you don't miss out on new videos about artisanal Italian wines and much, much more. And remember, great wines are not made in great numbers.